Hi folks, it's good to be with you today. We're just here uh, to share uh, the Word of God to you. And uh, we're going to read from the Bible and I uh, hope it's a blessing to you. Jesus says in his word, he says, let not your heart, he says, let not your heart be troubled, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me but by me. If ye had known me, you should have known my father also, and from henceforth you know him, and have seen him. And Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. And Jesus said unto him, I have been so long with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. How sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father? and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very word's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. And whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I ask, I, I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If she will ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Lord, pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. So, here in the Bible, the Bible, Jesus says, that he will send the Comforter. Now the Comforter is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the presence of God. It is God. And the Holy Spirit is holy. The Holy Spirit is love. The Holy Spirit is God. And the Holy Spirit has been given to God's people. And the Holy Spirit is the only way we can know God. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot know God. It's like being in a room and there's no light in the room and then suddenly somebody brings a torch and lights up the room with the torch. That's what it's like with the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, it lights up the Bible, it lights up our understanding, and he not only lights up our understanding, but he gives us a new nature. And that's why Jesus said to Nicodemus, Nicodemus was a very religious man. Nicodemus was very, very religious. Nicodemus knew his Old Testament inside and out. And yet, Jesus said to him, you must be born again. Jesus said to him, you must be born again. And the word born again means born from above. It means that God comes into your heart, comes into your life, and gives you a new heart, a new, a new nature. That is what it means by being born again. And Nicodemus said, why must you be born again? And Jesus said, you must be born again. Being born again means born from above. It means the Holy Spirit 
comes into your life and the Holy Spirit changes you. The Holy Spirit gives you a new life. The Holy Spirit gives you a new nature. And that's what it means to be born again. If you want to know God, the only way that you can know God is to be born again. That's the only way. The only way to be born, uh, to know God, to have a relationship with God, is to be born again. Born again means that the Holy Spirit comes into your life. The Holy Spirit comes into your life and changes you and gives you a new nature. You need a new nature. You need a new heart. You need a new heart and a new change in your heart. And unless you're born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Unless you're born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Jesus says, flesh gives birth to flesh and spirit gives birth to spirit. The flesh gives birth to flesh and the spirit gives birth to spirit. And your heart, if it doesn't know God, is of the flesh. And it's of the flesh, the mind. And unless you are of the Spirit of God, unless you allow the Spirit of God to come in, and the Spirit of God to change you, you cannot know God. So Jesus said, I send the Comforter. He said the Comforter will reveal Him and reveal the truth. That the Comforter will... Uh, it was the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit will point us to Christ. The Comforter will show us our sin. He said that the Holy Spirit has come to convict the world of sin. Not me, but the Holy Spirit has come to convict the world of sin. And when the Holy Spirit begins to work in your life, He will begin to expose the fakeness in your life. If there's any fakeness in you or me, the Holy Spirit will unmask the fakeness. And the Holy Spirit will show you... Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Excuse me, man. The Holy Spirit will show you your failings and show you your need of God. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. Jesus said that the Spirit... Uh, we, we worship God in spirit and in truth. That we need the Holy Spirit to change us. We need the Holy Spirit to give us a new heart. Paul says we are new creatures in Christ. The old has passed away. Behold, all has become new. If you want to be a new person, if you want to change, you change by being born again. Are you born again today? Are you born again of the Holy Spirit of God? Has the Holy Spirit of God come in your life? You see, it's not about religion. You can go to church, you can go and have a religion and be very religious, but it doesn't mean you know God until you're born again. You can go to church, you can go to any religious building, you can go on any religious group, any religious organization, you can do any religious act, but it doesn't mean you know God until you're born again. Until you're born again of the Holy Spirit. When you're born again of the Holy Spirit, you have new desires for God. You, you desire God. You desire His Word. You desire sound teaching. You desire to be with God's people. You desire the things of God because your nature has been changed. That is what it means to be born again. And the question is, are you born again? Are you born again of God today, the Holy Ghost? Has the Holy Spirit come in your life? Are you born again? Are you born again? Have you been touched by the Spirit of God? Have you been touched by the power of God? Has God come into your life and changed you by the power of the Holy Spirit? Has the Holy Spirit come in and breathed new life into you? Has the Holy Spirit come in and convicted you? Has the Holy Spirit come in, God's Spirit, and shown you that you need Christ? Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. It means born from above. It means the Holy Spirit coming into your life. It means the Spirit of God entering your heart. It means the Spirit of God changing you. It means the Spirit of God making you anew. 
You need to be made anew if you want to worship God, if you want to love God, if you want to praise Him and worship Him. You cannot do it in your own flesh. You cannot do it in your own strength, in your own ability. You cannot do it in your own strength or in your own ability. You need the Spirit of God. Are you born again? Are you born again? Has God come in and changed you? Has God come in and made you anew? By the Holy Ghost. Flesh gives birth to flesh and spirit gives birth to spirit. Are you a spiritual man? Are you a spiritual woman today? Has the Spirit of God come in? Are you spiritual today? Has the Holy Spirit come in your life? Has the Holy Spirit changed you? Has the Holy Spirit touched you? The Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit works in conjunction with His Word. The Holy Spirit convicts. The Holy Spirit gives you a new nature. Have you been born again? Have you been born again today? Have you been born again of God? Have you been born again of the Holy Ghost? As the Holy Spirit come in, are you born again? The only way, the only way to get to heaven is to be born again. The only way to heaven is to be born again. It's the only way. You cannot get in to heaven by your own ability. You cannot get into heaven by your own flesh. Jesus said, you must be born again. Are you born again? Are you born again? Are you born again? Has the Holy Spirit come in your life? Has God given you a new nature? Has God given you a spiritual nature? So you love the Word of God, you love God, and you turn away from that which is wrong, and you love to follow Jesus, and you want to praise Jesus. Have you become born again today? Or are you clinging on to religion? Clinging on to judgmentalism? Clinging on to political correctness. Clinging on to your own self-righteousness. As if you can earn your way to heaven. You cannot earn your way to heaven. There's nothing that you can do to get yourself into heaven unless you are born again. I say you are. Unless you are born again. You've got to be born again. Born again of the Holy Spirit. Born again of the Holy Ghost. Not born of spice, not born of drugs, but born again of Jesus. Not born again of wacky backy, but born again of Jesus. Not born again of drugs, not born again of sex, but born again of Jesus. Are you born again? I say, are you born again? <laughs> or are you into spice? Are you into drugs? Are you into sexual immorality? Are you into gossiping and hating? Violence or are you born again? Born again means the Holy Ghost comes in your life. It means the Holy Spirit comes in. It means God changes you. God fills you with His Holy Ghost. And you begin to praise Jesus. You begin to worship Jesus. You begin to hate evil and love God. You begin to seek God and love God. And hate that which is evil and love that which is good. But we've got to turn it around. We've got to turn it around, don't we? Yeah, we have. We're going to turn it around, folks. That which is evil today, we say is good. Ain't it? Ain't it so? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's true. That which is evil today, we've turned it around. we flipped it around and said that it is good. When God said it's evil, we flipped it around with our political correctness and said, Oh, no, God. It ain't evil. It's good. Nah. We need to be born again. We need to be born again so our minds think right. Our hearts think right. Our mouth praises God. Our hearts love God and our fellow man. So Jay, you're the Bible basher. Jay, you don't love. Oh no, I don't love. Why am I here today then? I could be in the pub. I could be in the prostitute place. I could be anywhere getting drunk. I could be anywhere having sex anywhere. I could be doing that right now. I love you because I'm here to tell you you need to be born again. You need to be born again. Jesus said you must be born again. Born again of the Holy Ghost. Are you born again? Are you born again or are you drugged? Are you drugged up? Or are you born again? Are you sexed up? Or are you born again? 
Are you angry or are you born again? Are you born again? Are you born again of the Holy Ghost? What is in your heart today? What fills your heart today? Is it God or is it money? Is it God or is it sex? Is it God or is it drugs? Is it God or is it hate? What is in your heart today? Are you born again? Are you born again? Are you born again? Has the Spirit of God touched you and changed you and made you anew? So Jay, don't give me that Bible bashing. I don't want none of that Bible bashing. Well, my friend, tough. It's called democracy. And in a democracy, you've got Muslims. In a democracy, you've got gay people. And in a democracy, you've got born-again Christians. So get used to democracy, folks. I'm here to preach the gospel, and it ain't going to change. Because we're in a democracy. Unless you decide we're not in a democracy. And you say, well, the Muslims can have free speech, and the gays can have free speech. But you born-again Christians, you can't have free speech. And if you do that, we ain't in a democracy. But we're in a democracy. Because we're in a democracy, I have freedom to tell you, you must be born again. Born again of the Holy Ghost. Born again of Jesus. Born again of the Lord. Are you born again? Are you born again? It's no good looking at the Ouija board. It's no good reading your horoscopes trying to find out what's going to happen next week. I'll tell you what's going to happen next week. It's either going to be good or it's going to be bad and it'll be good if you follow Jesus. Jesus is the Savior today. He is the God Most High. He is the Savior who came and died for you. Jesus Christ gave his life that you may have life. And as the wheels of history move on, as time moves on, there is not much time left. There's very little time left, my friends. And the only hope for you, my friends, is Christ. He shed his blood, laid down his life, and gave his life that you may have life. Remember that he loved you and died for you on that cross. When I'm out here today, I'm out here today so that you don't have to go to hell. That's why I'm out here today. I'm out here today because I want to give you the best present that you could ever have. And that present is to know your God. To know God. To know Him as your Lord and Savior. He shed His blood for you on that cross and He laid down His life. And you can stamp your feet, you can laugh your mark, you can ignore it, but God is coming for you. God is going to come for you. God is pursuing you. You know why he's pursuing you? Because he sent me to you today. I like your smile, man. He, he, he came to save you today. He shed his blood for you today. He died for you today. He hung on a cross. Life, new life, can begin now. Jesus said, you must be born again. Are you born again today? Are you born again? Has God come in your life and changed your life? Are you born again today? Are you born again? Are you born again? Has the Spirit of God come in and changed you? There is power, power, a wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, a wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is joy, joy, a wonder working joy in the blood of the Lamb. And there is joy, joy. A oh, wonder working joy in the blood of the Lamb. My friends, there is a love for you today. There is a love so deep and so wonderful for you today. That love is there for you today in all its fullness and all its wonder. That love is there for you. It's only there that Christ shed his blood. And when he shed his blood, 
and died on that cross, he showed you his love. He showed you how much he cared for you. He showed you how much he loved you when he died on that cross. My friends, Jesus Christ gave his life that you may have life. So turn to him today. Jonah was told to go to Nineveh. And Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. He didn't want to go to people who didn't believe in God. And Jonah didn't want to go. He didn't want to go. But I tell you this, God wants you to be saved. He is not reluctant. He wants you to be saved. You know why? Because you're beautiful. You're special. You're important to God. You're beautiful. You're important. You're special. So special that he laid down his life for you. He knows the funny quirky things you do. He knows the funny things you do. He knows what you're thinking at night. He knows what you're doing. And he knows these things and yet he still loves you and gives his life for you. He shed his blood for you. So my friends, remember what Christ has done. Remember Christ says you must be born again. Unless you're born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. This is so serious. It's really, really serious. It doesn't matter what you do, you cannot know God by your own ability. You cannot know God by what you can do. It's impossible. It's impossible for you to know God in your own ability. It's impossible. Until you're given a new nature. Until you are born again. Until you are born again. Until the Spirit of God comes in your life and changes you. The question is, are you born again? Are you born again? Have you come to know God by the power of the Holy Spirit? Jesus' words, in his word says that flesh gives birth to flesh and the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. <coughs> Jesus, Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah, died for you on that cross. Shed his blood for you. He died on that cross for you, sir. He gave his life for you on that cross. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I tell you what, if you can explain to me, as a, as a Jew, yeah, Isaiah 53, what is that? What, 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 what does Isaiah 53 mean to you? Yeah. What, what Bible translation do you use as Jews? You know, as Jews, what, translation, what Bible translation do you use? Yeah. What does this mean to you as a Jew? It says, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our chastisement. And it says, all we like sheep have gone astray, and the Lord has turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. What does that mean? And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. When Jesus died on that cross, when Jesus died, he's prophesying about Jesus. Where, right, he says, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed. So when Christ died, he died for the Jewish people. No, he died for you. Yeah, but did, did the Messiah die for you? Did Jesus die for you? He's your Messiah. He's your Messiah, guys. You're, you're, you're special to him. You're special. Do, do you believe that Jesus existed? Do you believe Jesus is the Messiah? Yeah, yeah. But he, why did he die on the cross then? No, he died for you. He, he was punished for you. You know in the Torah? Yeah, in the Torah. Did he have sacrifices for, for sins in the Torah? Yeah, they sacrificed lambs. They had that. The, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that was pointing to the final sacrifice of Jesus. The story of Abraham. Abraham, he was told to sacrifice his son, and then God provided. Yeah, yeah, 
it provided a ram, but it's pointing to the final sacrifice for you. Jesus is the final one. Jesus said this, Jesus said this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Can, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I just finish this? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God so loved the world, he gave his life for you, he shed his blood. I, I know my redeemer is living. Where's that? In, in Job? Show me that. It's not in the book of Job, mate. It's not in the book of Job, honestly. Have a read of it, yeah? It's not in Job, mate. Right? My f uh, you find it, find it. Find it. It's in Mark, not in Job, <laughs> yeah? Jesus Christ died on that cross for you. Right, right. As, as have you ever lied? Right. When Christ died, he died for your lies. He died for you. Mark 16. No, 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 I need the mic. I need the mic. I need the mic. No, no, I'm here, I'm here to preach. I'm here, I'm here to preach, bro. I'm here to preach. You need Jesus, sir. You need Jesus, sir. You do. You need him. Because he died for you, sir. He did. He died for you. He said it. He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But Jesus died for you all, yeah? He died for the atheists and he died for the Jews. And you he died for on that cross. Yeah. All right. All right, God bless you. God bless you. Right, can I, can, I ex, can I explain to you? Does anybody do it in England today? Does anybody do it today? They don't do it today, you know why? Because it was a specific thing for then, it wasn't for today. Yeah. It, does it say it many times? Or once? Just once. So it's not a command. If it's Don't done three like or four times, it's a command, yeah? No. All right, have you got you? G all right, respect to you guys, yeah? All right, and have a lovely day, yeah? All right, God bless you. All right, I respect you guys, yeah? We're all the same, but we all believe God. Meditate on Isaiah 53. And tell me, if you tell me who that is, I'll become a Jew. <laughs> all right, God bless you. He died for you, yeah? God bless you. God bless you. If you ever want to get saved, read Isaiah 53, yeah? God bless you. Jesus Christ gave his life for you, yeah? Shed his blood for you. Hi, bro. You're all right, mate. He is the Lamb of God. He is the Lamb of God. What football team are you guys? What football team is it? Analect. Did you win? You won? What score was it? You won, you won. Who was it? Who did you play? You're playing my... Oh, I'm much united. <laughs> Have a nice day, guys, anyway, yeah? <laughs> Jesus died for you. He is the Lamb of God that shed his blood for you today. The Lamb of God that laid down his life for you. The Lamb of God that gave his life for you today. If you want to know the meaning of life, and the purpose, the purpose of life, if you want to know it, look to the Lamb of God. John the Baptist said when he saw Jesus, behold, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. There is power, power, a oh, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, a oh, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is joy, joy, a oh, wonder-working joy in the blood of the Lamb. There is joy, joy, a oh, wonder-working joy in the blood of the Lamb. Jesus died today for you on that cross.